Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another Fate Grand Order video. Today, I wanted to talk about the fact that Ukyo is getting a re-revival. And also, there is a main quest story campaign completion, so I'm going to be talking about both of those in today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, feel free to leave a like, comment down below, tell me how you are planning to do any of this stuff, and subscribe to me if you want some more stuff. I do Fogo stuff, and I do Shonen Archive, and I swear to God, I sometimes do other things too. <laughs> so... Let's get into it. So if you don't know, the main story completion, this is basically to help you out. This is what I've been waiting for. It's here from July 25th to August 31st. Um, basically, they give you a revival uh, item, which is the Lee Line Stone, which is a new limited item that basically it revives the party for you. So you don't have to use quartz or all three of your um, command seals, basically. Um, and it's usable in Arc 1, Arc 1.5, and Arc 2, all of them, basically. Um... And it's only for this specific campaign, by the way, so you really, if you want to catch up to the story, now is your best time. Uh, especially in Olympus, where all the fights are super annoying and they take forever. If you just want to get done with it and enjoy the story, this is your best time to do it, which is why I was waiting for them, so I don't have to worry about it anymore. So you can return to battle without expending three command spells or certain coins to use them in difficult battles against the strongest main quest enemies. Please note that there is a limit on Leyline Stone's use. If you do not use a Leyline Stone by the time the, 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 the by the time its limit its time limit it will disappear. Leyline Stones cannot be used during limited time events or main interludes. So literally only the story quest. Only use it during this. They're gonna start giving them out on today. I think at day roll, it'll be here until the 31st, and then you have until September 15th to actually use them. Uh, yes, and here's some limited time master quests as well for you. Pretty easy, pretty simple stuff. Very easy if you want to catch up to the story very quickly in time for, uh, the next story beat, which will be sometime in, not, is it, the, I think it's November? Sometime around that. I can actually look right here. Um, go back. Come on, go back. Let's see, should be somewhere in November? No, it's in October? No, is it actually December? Yes, it is in fact December. Okay. Um, and the other thing that was announced is the fact that we are going to get the revival sometime in August. So early August. So I would assume basically right when this event ends right now, isn't it? The summer camp ends August 1st, so I would assume August 1st, but you never know with them sometimes. So let me go quickly over what the Ukiyo is. In terms of the event itself, it's a labyrinth. It's actually pretty easy. It's actually pretty chill if you take it one bit at a time. This event is super long, but if literally you just play and you advance little by little, you will finish the event before it's over. If you try and if you try and do it all at once, uh, God, Godspeed, my friend. Unless you're skipping all the story. The story is also very intensive. I also think the story is pretty good, so you should experience it if you want. But, yeah, it's basically a labyrinth. You go through it. It If you take it one bit at a time, it shouldn't be too hard. Um, our, I think for our side, they fixed the issue. I think on Japan, they had the hard version of this where it would constantly load. I don't think we have that anymore. Uh, so, yes. Pretty, pretty easy event. In terms of the units, let's go into the actual, there's no free unit, but there is, I forget, is this where, do we already have these? Sometimes I forget if they release them early or not, but if we don't, we should get the MP upgrade for Kiara, the regular version, and for the story, for uh, Sherazade, turning her Storyteller EX into Arabian Night Storyteller, which is very good, very nice buffs. But anyway, let's go on here, so yeah, here's the event servants, Kama is obviously the big one, followed up by uh, Yagyu... Parvati, Sherazade, Mahat, Mata, Mahabrami, Matahari, <laughs> Kiara, and then Mash, and then there's others that I think they're all Japanese servants, basically. Yeah, only all Japanese servants get some form of a 30% damage bonus. So, uh, next, there's also a bunch of things. There's a lot of things to it, but it's pretty simple. Just play. Here's the summoning. So there's two. There's days where it's Kama, and there's days where it's Kiara. And there's also Yagyu for Kiara. She's not as crazy breakout crazy as her summer version, but they've buffed her a whole bunch to make her still pretty good, I'd say. Uh, Clavarian's Boys D plus, uh, let me just quickly, one quick, two arts, two busters, three hits on quick, three hits on arts, one hit on buster, and five hit extra. Uh, Clavarian's base D plus plus plus. Um, reduces one enemy's debuff resistance for one turn, reduces their arch resistance for one turn, and then charges own NP gauge 50%. 
100% debuff resistance and um, arch resistance of 30%. When I think this originally came out, it was just a, a MP buff and a debuff resistance, but the arch resistance helps a little bit. Thesis of the Still Heart A+, uh, reduces all enemies MP gauge by 1, removes their debuffs, and then all, removes their buffs, and then reduces their defense for 3 turns. The defense reduction is 30%, and I think that reducing their buffs is the new one. Third skill, Goddess Metamorphosis EX, grants self-invincibility for one turn, grant, increase own critical damage for one turn, increase own MP generation rate for one turn, increase own debuff resistance for one turn, increase own health healing received for one turn, HP drain effect, dot PNG, demerit, 50% crit damage, 50% MP rate, 50% debuff resistance, and 50% heal rates, all very nice, unfortunately they all last one turn, but it is what it is. Passive skills, Authority of the Beast D, increase on critical damage by 8%, Independence Manifestation E, increase on critical damage by 2%, increase on mental debuff resistance by 2%, increase on instant kill resistance by 2%, uh, Logos Eater, increases on defense against humanoid enemies by 16%, the Nega Saber, uh, grants self attack advantage against ruler class, deals 1.5 damage against them, um, third skill, bonus against rulers, she's super anti-ruler, her Noble Phantasm, Rank EX, three hits, arts, ignores invincibility for one turn, deals damage and ignores, <laughs> deals damage that ignores defensive buffs to all enemies, recovers own HP, 600% uh, 600, 600 damage at level one and 900% uh, 900 at level five, uh, the overcharge at one is 5,000 uh, 5, healing, then 10,000 you can get all the way to the end there. So very good unit. Still pretty solid, not as crazy powerful as the, um, obviously the summer version, but she still has her uses and still pretty nice to have actually. I have her, so I enjoy using her whenever I can. She also has advantages over the three rider classes, not, I forget what, and the three knights classes? I forget what they're called. But basically it's caster, assassin, and rider. I for Calvary, Calvary, there you go, don't correct me. And Berserker, and then the added bonus of being uh, anti-ruler, which is actually pretty nice, to be honest. Because there's not, outside of Avengers and Berserkers, there's not a lot of dudes that are just anti-ruler the way she is. So, pretty nice. Uh, and then Kama, obviously. Yagyu, he's good. That's basically all I need to say. I think he is story locked, so if you have a chance to get him, that'd be nice. He's a single target arts, that's all you need to know. He is a man, so I'm not going to focus too much on him, forgive me. But just know that he is good if you can get him. Extremely powerful, actually. Very nice, and he's arts, so if you have Gastoria, you have your single target arts dude for you, for sabers. Not to be underestimated at all. So, this is Kama. She comes in three different forms. Kid. Adult. Uh, multi-armed adults, you know, the three flavors of what any real woman eventually goes through. Not a lot of people know this, but you start off as a little kid, you start off, then you go into adulthood, and then eventually you manifest into four armed goddesses. This is all what happens to women eventually. Blessing of the Goddess B. Oh, wait, my bad. She has three... What is going on with this site? Or maybe it's my internet. Um... What? Yeah, there we go. Two quick cards, one arts, two buster, four hits on quick, three on uh, arts, and four on buster, and five extra hit. First skill, Blessing of the Goddess B, reduces one ally's max HP by 1,000 permanently, demerit, overcharges their MP by one stage for one one time, three turns, recovers on HP. Uh, the recovery is 4,000. Very nice skill, actually. Even with the redu reduction, it's still very nice to be able to just... The ability to just overcharge an MP is crazy and that's also why Morgan uh, eventually gets used because she's just able to very easily overcharge NPs. Um, grant self gut status for one time, increases on attack for three turns. The revival is 2000 HP and 30% attack up. Very nice. Uh, Mara Parpi, and also this is a permanent gut state. So until you take damage and die, this guts will stay with her forever. <laughs> it's very nice. Mara Papias EX. The only thing that's not, the only thing that would make it better to make it to true, it would if it was like the best guts user I think in all of the games are the ones that can stack guts, uh, and can keep it all the time. I think the the only one that does that is Herc. I think Herc has an ability like that. I think the Pickle Man eventually gets it. Um, I don't know why I'm calling him Pickle Man. I know is Hijikata. There you go. I like Hijikata in Gintama. Anyway, uh, third skill. 
I, there's one other one that I'm forgetting. The the twins, the the pirate twins, uh, not twins. The pirate, the Yuri pirate. There we go. Charges on NP. Mario plus EX <laughs> grants self attack and defense advantage against uh, alter ego class for three turns. Uh, bargains two times damage against them and it takes 0.5 damage from them. Increases on critical damage by 20% for three turns. Debuff resistance for one turn. Uh, NP 50%. Charm resistance 40%. Very nice. Magic resistance A increases on debuff resistance by 20%. Writing A increases on quick performance by 10%. Independent manifestation C increases on crit damage by 6%. Increases on mental debuff resistance by 6 cents. Love Goddess Essence B increases on damage by 225. Grants self uh, charm debuff immunity, which is very nice. Her pen skill for the third one is increasing attack against Lancers because, of course, Parvati. And her Noble Phantasm is a 10 hit quick that deals damage to one enemy with an 80% chance to charm them for one turn. Increases own quick performance for three turns. Uh, damage is 1200% at level 1 and 2000 at level 5. And she increases her quick performance by 20% at NP and overcharge 1. And then 40% if you can get it all the way to 5. This unit is insane i love using my comma she's so good it's nice that there's i'm pretty sure all the soccer phases for the most part are getting may is she the best one actually don't know compared it to the summer version but of the ones of na i think the best one for me is comma just because of how crazy this ability of hers that she basically so being quick and having this ability where she has an 80 percent chance to charm the enemy for one turn um and also having 10 hits, the best version of the quick NP is the ones that have multiple hits because quick has a little bit of a problem with NP gauge. Um, compared to arts, art, obviously arts has it super easy because that's what they focus on, but quick is more focused on crits. So the more hits that you can do, the better. That's why uh, someone like um, Dantes is the better, one of the best ones for quick um, farming because he hits so much and he also has an NP game. She doesn't have NP gain, but what she does have is this ability to hit with a very strong single target. And then chances are the enemy will have a break state, so they'll go into the break state, and then they'll be charm locked because not a lot of dudes are actually immune to charm because charm is just something that doesn't really happen for most people. So it's actually very easy for you to basically charm lock the enemy, especially with her abilities here that make it so that it's easier for you to charm them, uh, making it almost 100%, and then you have the ability to just keep looping this over and over again and keep slapping them, and most things will die by the time you hit the three turns over for quick being up and if she is still alive by the end of it she has a guts that makes it extremely hard to kill her and then she can also use this on herself or she can use it on an ally who's ready to go like if there's an ally ready to die and you're like whatever reduce them a little bit have a super overcharged np for one turn and smack them the hell out of there you can totally do that but you can also just do it to her so she always gains for three turns 25 so this stacks for three turns, so it would be 20%, 40%, and then I think at the most you could probably have it is 65%, which ain't bad by turn three. Very good. Very good unit. I love her, absolutely. She's fantastic to use. Funny enough, she does have the Child Servant trait when she's at level one. Doesn't have it for any of the other ones for obvious reasons. But yeah, if you are going for Kama, she's definitely worth having, even as someone with uh, who's in fully into the Castoria life right now. If there is a big uh, boss that can be taken down with Kama, I will use Kama and I will switch over to Scotty, just because of how easy she can make certain fights for. She's one of those. She's definitely one of the best uh, boss killers, in my opinion. That's definitely what I think about her. So if you're going for her, go for it. And if you like, if you're a fan of Sakura, they have done justice. You have literally the three forms of Sakura. Whichever one you want. Whichever, whatever's your flavor, man. Did you prefer her as a kid before all the worm stuff? Boom, you got you right there. Do you prefer her and her kind of like happy-go-lucky stage? Boom, here you go. Do you want her with four arms? Boom, they got you. They got you in all forms of it, man. And I can't wait to eventually summon for the summer version in uh, another year or so. So yeah, that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I wish you the best of luck um, if you do end up summoning for Kama as the time goes on. Ah, oh, man. Till next time. I hope I didn't click that ad. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Goodbye.